All right, this is going to be a guide for solo players who want to try this legit that maybe haven't done it before. So, And honestly, it's not like the ultimate guide where it's going to have every single detail. I'm just going to go over some of the some of the things I learned this season, because this is the first season where I actually attempted to solo Glassway Grandmaster legit without doing the cheese. Now, if you want to do the cheese or if you want to know more about this Grandmaster, like things like where not to stand so you don't spawn the barriers early, leading up to the boss and just other little simple tips and tricks you can click at the, the top right here that little right there that notification there just that uh, that'll go over an entire guide for solo play for leading up to the boss room and also go over strad for using the cheese as far as loadout goes really like there's so many different options you can do i've seen tons of people do tons of different things and they all work seem to work fine just the most important thing is just use what you're comfy with obviously keeping in mind that there's Barrier champions, overload champions, there's a void burn, right? So, and then also this season, we got Lord Kelvin's Basilisk, which stuns overloads with void or stasis grenades. And with the void burn, obviously I'm gonna run uh, Vortex, and I'm also running a Warlock for this one playthrough as an example. But uh, other than that, it's whatever whatever pleases. I've seen lots of people have lots of luck using Crown Splitter, Fallen Guillotine, like swords for the overloads. Um, I'm using Taipan, Linear, myself, just I like it. Um, I also like Retro Frit. Retro Fit Escapade, um, the new light machine gun that's for this season. You know, it's a 900 RPM light machine gun. Uh, it has some really decent rolls. It burns through overload champ super fast. And really, just whatever you do pick, just the play style here is you're going to want to be able to wipe out an overload champion in one stun, like before they're able to wake up and come at you. Really, like that's the play. Like if you're going to solo this, that's kind of, I'd say, not mandatory but man makes such a difference so anything where you could get the stun on them and wipe them out before they wake up and charge you that's kind of what you're going for here and there's lots of different ways to do it like i said sword linears light machine gun probably more that i'm not mentioning there's probably a few rockets out there that can get the job done too if you're if you're skilled with it enough hell i even seen a guy get through this all solo without any weapons that could do any champion he's using uh shield bash on titan the void titan shield bash and peregrine greaves and he was taking them out that way in one shield bash like it was great anyways i guess we should get uh started here so this is what i learned this season doing glassway solo on gm all right so obviously you start in here you have an overload and some dregs kill them as soon as you kill that overload or kill all the enemies you're gonna start the encounter now i'm gonna put up a fancy health bar here of just both bosses just so you kind of know what phase I am in the the boss fight here for like what I'm talking about. So hopefully that's a quick reference for you. Maybe it's a waste of time. We'll see. Anyways, after you kill that, the first wave of overloads is going to spawn in, in both boss. Once they're coming, I make sure I'm in the left-hand room, center door, up against the left wall. Up against the left wall so the boss doesn't see me and pummel me with all his void shots there because that hurts. And also I still got a good view at the overload that's going to spawn there and I'm going to be able to get his attention. Plus, most of the time, the noise you're making is going to draw in the other overload that's kind of off camera on the left hand side there and also as a little benefit i can clear out the ads that spawn with this overload because they like to go straight to the far right hand door and shoot me in the back of the head i don't like that and yeah so as soon as i got their attention i'm gonna take off to the kind of behind me and to the right from where i am here a couple reasons for going to this side is one is the, the mini hydra boss doesn't come this way he'll go the other way we're gonna see here now I'm going to just use my emote here just so I can see where they're going because I want to give time for that mini boss to get out of the way because it sucks sometimes if he hangs out there it's going to ruin your day with the overloads when the overload comes in. So the overload you got the attention on, he's coming. So I'm just going to be here until kind of I see him come around the corner there and once I come around the corner I can burn him down. Now remember there's a second one there. Kind of the worst thing of this is if you don't know where they're coming from. Now I know this is the right hand side one though. I got his attention or I'm gonna make a I'm gonna bet my life on it anyways and so most likely the overload I don't know right now is gonna come from that door to the far far left or he's gonna come through the center door so and then it's just kind of a waiting game until I see him make noise now I'm still slightly aware that there's a chance he might come in the right hand door but I just seen him shooting there so I'm like okay I'm pretty sure I know where he is and then I wait for him the bosses, none of that matters to me until I kill these two overloads. Now here, you're just gonna see example why it's a pain when the mini Hydra boss is in the way of the overloads here. It still works out fine, but it's still inconvenient. 
Now, to fix that, I could have went to the back of the room, shot the, baited the mini boss farther away from the door before taunting this overload in, but but I didn't, and then this is just how it worked out. So unfortunately, I didn't get the kill on the first stun there, but uh, second stun worked out fine just with Taipan here. Now, the kind of best next step at this point is to burn this mini boss down all the way till he disappears completely. Now, the rules with this one is once you do 1 6 damage to him, he's going to spawn the next wave of overloads in, and then after you do a full third, he disappears completely. If you burn him down completely, he's gone, and you can just hang out at that center door on this left room here and taunt the overloads or draw them down that center door so you can kind of clear him out like we just did last time. But, but, I didn't do that this time, so now I made a mistake. I didn't burn him down. Really, it was like one more type end shot would have done it. So now I got to do this the hard way, which is having the mini boss still there and dealing with the overloads. Now, it came in the center door. I had my super to take care of that one easily enough. I don't have my super now, so I got to kind of reset myself. So what I'm going to do at this point is find the overload. I'm going to bait him down to this right-hand side room here because I don't want to be dealing with just with everything all in that room. So I'm going to take him over to this room here and then clear up some ads that follow him wait for him to find me in this room and as soon as he finds me in this room I'm gonna run back to the original room there and then you'll see her have a nice clean line of sight to take him out in peace as he's running back to the left hand room if that makes sense so for me that's kind of my best practice for when I screw up the damage phase there but again it's it's up to you like obviously the best thing to do is to just get rid of that little Hydra mini boss, but but I didn't do that, so this is how I correct that when I make a mistake. Anyways, after all that, next part's easy. Just damage this boss until he disappears. There's no other waves coming, so you can just do the full damage until he disappears. Once he disappears, it's gonna be the wyverns, or chickens, as I prefer to call them, because they look like chickens, I don't know. So, for this part, kinda, what I like to do is, I know a lot of people like left side, and left side's totally fine, just for me, just have it. I'm more comfy on the right hand side here. So, as soon as he disappears, I throw a grenade at the right hand door. Now, if I was another like two steps to the right, I would have got both uh, wyverns to come to me at this spot, which would have made it so much easier. But, but I was a little bit too paranoid, a little too close to the left hand door there. So he is gonna come through the center door there, but I have time to take out that one. And then I just kind of bolt it this way. It got a little iffy. So again, the mistake there is if I would have just a few more steps to the right side there at that door, it would have been fine. But Ah, this is what I got my super for here. Anyways, that's all. So again, same rules. There are two barriers there, so I do like to take out these two barriers first because it's not enjoyable fighting four barriers at once. So what I do here for the first two, anyways, and I see a lot of other people do it this way too, is I'm going to run to the far, far right room, far, far right door, and there's just a lot more cover. And the reason I run there is because from anywhere else you're fighting them, there's the chance that the mini Hydra boss is going to come get you. So just way over here right hand side and it's easy and you'll see here kind of next to this last barrier that the uh the mini boss he'll go up there but he'll never actually make himself like shown to you so he he's not he doesn't bother you at all honestly from if you do it from this side and of course now is a great time to go around and collecting any heavy or anything like that that you need to top up your ammo even if you want to wait for your super to come back by all means but uh but yeah yeah so now for wave two of barriers and wyverns slash chickens is again i like to do uh left hand room right side door so because the the mini hydra boss he went to the right hand side of the map there um he's really easy to pick off from this location again once you get him a sixth more damage the next wave's gonna spawn in now you'll see here i actually do it right i'm far enough over to the right to draw in both wyverns which makes it so much easier you know, things like my grenades and my super, like it's gonna just damage more of them and it's just easier. I don't have to worry about any sneaking behind me, I guess that's the main thing. That's the main thing. The worst thing is when a chicken sneaks up behind you because one shot you're dead is what it feels like. Now, after you clear out both chickens, then you're good to clear out the mini boss and then take out the last two barriers. And then you're on to uh, phase three of four. I should add though, these last two barriers, I'm gonna do left side room center door just because that's where I wanna be when the overload spawn in. So it's just, just easier to kill them like in the position you want to be for the next wave that's all now for the overloads part three here is definitely the easiest out of all of them so you don't have any other boss in the room with you it's just the big guy that's outside so same thing uh center door up against the left hand wall get their attention once you get their attention they're at the entrance of the door just hang out outside here just like this and just take them out as they come in now if 
you didn't get all their attention. I believe it's this one where I didn't get the second one's attention, it turns out. But uh, no problem. Take out all the ads because all the fanatics are coming in. And they can be super dangerous. So definitely clear them out. And then I just hang out like right here still. And one, my ears are open listening for the overload to come in. I'm almost certain he's going to come in right there on the left hand side. Yeah, there he is. And you can take them out kind of from a distance and it's relatively easy just using the cover there. So. So again, nothing to panic over for this one, right? So get their attention, get them to come to the center door. If you only get one out of the two through the center door, just keep your head on a swivel. And once you see them coming, like, again, you're in this room by yourself. And that's really the only thing that can go wrong with this is if you're not in this room by yourself. If you let the fanatics in, then it can get a little bit dicey on this section, but just don't let them in. Just kill them all when they try to come through the center door. And it's not a big deal. And then same thing for the last round. So after another six damage, to the main boss there, the next wave's gonna spawn in. And again, same thing, just keep your eye on the lookout for Vex reinforcements coming, champion has appeared. And then again, head to the center door and take them out, same as before. Like literally the same as last time. Make a ruckus at the center door, try to bait them all to the center door. If you only get one overload champion, not both of them in there, no big deal. He's most likely gonna be the left-hand portal one, so which means he's probably coming through the left-hand door and just clear them out. And again, remember, fanatics are not allowed inside this room with you, so clear them out too. And easy, done. On to wave, or phase four, I guess. Well, damage the boss until he disappears, and then it's phase four. Now with the phase four chickens, the only difference this time, I'm not doing the right-hand side door, I'm gonna do the center door, just like the overload, same method as the overloads. So as soon as they spawn in, I'm gonna try and do as much damage as possible to the wyverns. Now you have the mini boss is gonna come in the center door as well, but it's basically the same tactic as you did like right at the very start for the very first round of overloads is damage mall, get all their attention, hang out uh, right here, do an emote or whatever you have to do. And now the chickens will be stuck behind that mini boss all the time and damage them as much as you can there. So. You don't have to worry about doing as much damage to the mini bosses last time before because the next wave won't spawn until he's like fully dead. So keep in mind. Now, if one of the chickens does get in, like through one of the side doors, like he lost track of him or he went somewhere, that's no big deal. Just run to the opposite end of the room. So the worst place with chickens is having no cover between you and him. So bait them over to a side. You know, here I'm just, I'm doing laps until I get my grenade back because I want my grenade before I kind of battle him here. But, uh, you know, so I, I got to into a position where I got some cover against them. I can get the finisher on them. Just careful when you're doing finishers on them that you don't like run straight head first into their guns, like kind of strafe a little bit to the side from them so they don't get a direct hit on you, that's all. Um, and that's it, so after that, you're free and clear to take out the mini Hydra. As soon as you kill him, there will be two more Wyverns are gonna spawn in and then two more barriers, right? So that's four barriers total, but no big deal. So take out the mini boss and then same thing center door kill the wyverns draw them in through the center door that's best and take them out and then you're almost free and clear you just have all these barriers to fight now so if you haven't touched them at all you're gonna have four of them now the easiest place for me that i find fighting them is the center door on the left hand room here and there's something just one little thing you need to know about this because you don't want the boss to harass you so imagine this doorway here has a center line right there's a line drawn through the center of this entrance. Now, whenever you go to the left-hand side of that imaginary line, the boss is gonna go to the left-hand side of the map. Whenever you go to the right-hand side of this imaginary line, the boss will go to the right-hand side of the map. Does that make sense? So if you're finding it, if you're having trouble because the boss keeps interfering with you killing these champions, that's why it's because you keep going back and forth across this imaginary line, if that makes sense. So for example, here, Here's me going to the left-hand side of that imaginary line, and then we'll see the boss. He's going from the right-hand side of the map, and then he's going to the left-hand side of the map, kind of following me. But then he catches sight of me, so I got his attention now, so now he's gonna hang out in the center, if that makes sense. Now to fix that, just get out of his view, go around the corner to the one of the sides there. So I ran to the right-hand side here, so now the boss is going back to the right-hand side, and now I'm totally free and clear to kill these uh, champions in peace again, right? As long as I don't cross that line. So if I cross that line, he's going to follow. Does that make sense? So if he's bugging you, that's why you just keep crossing that line. That doesn't exist. It's imaginary. It's imaginary line. You keep crossing it so the boss keeps messing with you. That's all. If you don't want him to mess with you, stop crossing that line. That's it. That's it. And then after that, yeah, just kill the boss because it's the only thing left. Easy. Easy. And that's it. You're done. 
Ah, I'm kidding, it's not easy, but I'd still rather do this than Corrupted, personally, anyways. But uh, it's only DFA this week, but uh, next week, Windigo for Warden of Nothing. Don't forget to do that. It's going to be a great, uh, great weapon next season. That's next week, though, not right now. Thanks for watching, though. I really appreciate it.